So if, if you're doing like a, a fairly thick tail, but you want it to have like that nice whip action, uh, think about like where it's changing direction will have a little bit more of that straight. Hey everybody, Jason from My Animate here. How's everybody doing? So last snippet, we talked a little bit about overlap in a walk on the head, right? So we were talking about um, finding our attitude pose, right? So if the if the attitude pose is up like this and we're walking, uh, we're going to do the, the highs and the lows at that attitude point, right? And then on the way down, we're going to drag a little bit. And on the way up, we're going to drag a little bit. So we get this automatic overlap, right? So continuing with that conversation, the way I handle sort of like a overlap with a tail or something like that, like where it's going side to side, um, sometimes it can get really wormy if you try to do uh, too much of an S curve, right? So what I tend to do is the same sort of principle. So at the side, the side, uh, I try to keep the tail somewhat straight, you know, but but I imagine like, okay, so your, your tail is going to be wagging like this, right? Uh, and then the tip of the tail is going to be a lot more flexible than where it's driving from, right? So if you imagine right here, this is where the tail wag is going to drive from. It's going to drive from the hip. You know, you might have a little bit of hip motion in there, but it's going to really drive from this section, right? Uh, and then this will be the looser section, okay? So if I'm looking at the two extremes of a tail wag, it might be something like this, right? Where the you know, the tail, well, the butt right, might be something like this, right? You know, not quite as far as where the tail is. All right, so we have that kind of straight and straight. And then on the way from here to there, I do a little bend, right? So let's look at the in-between. So we look at previous and next right here. Uh, so on the way to here and here, this is where it's going to be driving from, right? And so the tip is going to bend backwards, okay? So we might have something along these lines where it sort of drives back like that, okay? And then from here back to the other side, let's go ahead and copy this, copy that, and we'll put that at the end of the cycle paste it and then we'll put this on for two frames so we can do an in-between in between these two and uh, so on the way back again this is going to be driving right so where the the tail is attached is going to be driving it then we might have the tail sort of bend back this way okay something like that right now if we flip these then we, we sort of get that overlap, right? That we were talking about. Now with a tail, it can be a lot more looser than this. Like if it's a really thin tail, like a like a mouse tail or something like that, or Pluto's tail or Mickey Mouse's tail, it can be a lot more like a whip action, right? Uh, but this is just a general principle, right? So if I go ahead and we just put these on for two frames and I do a breakdown in between each one of these. Uh, so this again, will be going this way, right? We'll be going that direction. But the tip of the tail is gonna be a bit looser, a little bit more flexible. So that's actually gonna go slightly more this way and then come back to here, right? So we might get something like, like this, where you get the tip of the tail sort of coming back. It's basically following through here, but it's been driven from here, right? So you might get a little bit more of an S curve here, which gives you that really nice flow to the tail wag, right? So you get that, okay? And then over here, between here and here, basically an in-between, right? So it's gonna start to stop, right? So this part here is coming to a stop, but this part here is still driving backwards, right? So this is sort of like what, what I call straight ahead animation, right? So you're basically going driving here, okay? And then this part's slowing down, but this part's still dragging backwards, right? And then you get to here. And now again, on the other side, it's gonna follow through to get to this point, right? So on here to here, again, just sort of like let this part start to drive this way, but this part here, is gonna bend backwards, like it's gonna follow through, right? So something along these lines. 
So you get that nice drag right there. So it follows through here, but it's pushing this way. So not everything is going at the same time, right? And then here, this will be maybe a little bit more drag that, like that. Okay. And then from here to here, you start to get, again, this is starting to slow down. Okay. But up here, it's still dragging, right? Still dragging this way. Okay, so you still get that drag. And again, we start to get back into the other side, right? So you get that nice little follow through there. So let's go ahead and play this. I'm gonna play it a, a little bit faster than what we got here. So I'm gonna play it like 12 frames per second. Okay, it, it, might, it might be a little bit slow, but let's check it out. All right, and then actually we don't need that last one because it's a copy, right? So it's just, it's basically eight frames. So boom, stop it right there. And now you've got that nice tail wag. So again, think about uh, the, the, the tension of the tail, right? So if, if you're doing like a, a fairly thick tail, but you want it to have like that nice whip action, uh, think about like where it's changing direction will have a little bit more of that straight, right? So you're going to have basically this, this kind of thing going on, right? So you have it straight. So it's straight here, but at the very tip, the very tip, it's still going to have that where it's coming from, right? So keep this part nice and flexible. So flexible, okay? And this part here, it's a little stiffer, right? Because it's, it's joined to the body, right? So it's joined to the body of the dog or whatever the animal you've got there, right? So this is a little less stiff. So this is stiffer. So this is one that's driving the action, but the tip is actually following through, okay? Now, if you have really, really cartoony type animation where your character is zipping around the screen, what makes it uh, feel a little bit more fluid is the overlap. So if you've got like uh, the hair or the clothing, something else that has a little bit more flow to it, you're, it sort of grounds your animation and makes it a little bit more believable. So wherever you can, if you're designing a character, give it something that you can overlap because it, it will help to keep the character uh, more loose, more fluid and more flexible. All right, have a good one you guys, take care of yourselves and we'll see you again next time. All right, take care, bye.